reached that point in your life when you realize that you're not all that special? Or more importantly, has your wife realized it? <laughs> well, today I'm going to show you how to get the attention and respect of your neighbors. Unless, of course, they've met you, but hey, that's not my fault. <laughs> you know when you look at pictures of fancy houses in these magazines? Then take a look at your own house. You notice the difference? I'm not talking about the nice trees and the no tarps on the roof and the lack of K car turned upside down on the front lawn. I'm talking about that fancy gingerbread trim they have on the eaves of some of the nice looking houses. Wouldn't your house look good with that kind of trim on it? Hmm? Oh, I know what you're thinking. Where am I going to get the money to do that? Or how am I going to pull that one off? Or hey, wait a sec, I'm not even married. <laughs> well, you know, like so many things in life, a lot of time the answer is right in your own backyard. Chances are you got a bunch of toys that you don't use anymore because your kids have grown up and gone. Or maybe your grandfather charged them all on your Visa card before you had him picked up. <laughs> well, I got some great news for you. Because this isn't just junk lying around your yard any longer. In about one coat of paint from now, it's going to be your beautifully decorative gingerbread trim. that painting technique, you may get a little bit of overspray there. <laughs> You'll never even see that once the snow flies. <laughs> now you just take all your decorative items around to the front lawn. Your sconces, your finicules, your bric-a-brac, whatever. <laughs> then you just attach everything to your eaves in an artistic yet subtly symmetric pattern. <laughs> oh yeah, one other rule. Inflatable toys don't like staple guns. And there we go. Bring the ladder down so we get a better look. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's got it. Okay, now what did that cost us, eh? A gallon of paint, a back lawn, a couple of muscle spasms. Well worth it. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Speaking of which, this project will make your wife feel pretty darn special. The neighbors are really gonna notice you now. <laughs> You know, other than about a week in October, I basically did nothing last year, and I, and I was fine with that. But even though I was doing nothing, my mind was still thinking about stuff. Stuff that I hadn't done and should have. Stuff that I had done and shouldn't have. But mainly it was coming up with a lot more evidence that, as far as I'm concerned, proves that I'm right and almost everybody else is wrong. And that was fine too, but where I made my mistake uh, was that I shared all that with my friends and especially my wife. And before you knew it, they were suggesting that I gather up all those opinions and stories and uh, take them on the road where they belong. I even went, uh, went to see my doctor to make sure I was healthy enough to tour again, and he gave me the go ahead. He said I probably wouldn't get sick on the road, but even if I did, he'd prefer I was thousands of miles away when it happened. So I put together a brand new show, and I'm calling it uh, I'm Not Old, I'm Ripe. And we're going to be doing 20, about 25 cities, starting in St. Pete, Florida on March the 30th, and we're going to end up in the middle of May somewhere out west. Uh, it's basically a, a lodge meeting, and if you want to find out where I'm going to be and when I'm going to be there, go to redgreen.com, click on the city that's nearest to you. I'm hoping you can all make it, or I'm hoping a few of you can make it. I think it's going to be uh, my best show yet, and if you saw the first two, you know that's certainly doable. So, uh, looking forward to a successful tour. Otherwise, my friends and my wife are going to look like idiots. Uh, until then, uh, I hope, I'm hoping to see you uh, at the lodge meeting. And uh, in meanwhile, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>